how much is MBA worth? Introduction. In this case study will help George, who is from UK, decide whether it makes sense to go to USA for MBA. And again, we're going to use scenario analysis. We know a few things about George. So first of all, as we said, he considers three scenarios. In the pessimistic scenario, he thinks he will get a 10% increase in net income with respect to what he's earning now. He considers also two other scenarios. Realistic one would be 20% increase in the salary and optimistic 40. Currently, the MBA will cost roughly 180,000 US dollars in total. So using those assumptions, try to solve an Excel case study and to decide whether it makes sense or not to take this option and go to USA to get the MBA. Once you are done with that, move on to the next lectures where you can see the solution to this case study. So let's try and help George with a simple calculations in Excel. So please download the file attached to the lecture, which is called MBA, is it worth? And here in master sheet, you will find a table of content where we have listed all the sheets we've got here with the links so we can go back and forth. The first one we're going to start with is actually the loan for financing the MBA. And here we wanted to see how much money he has to pay due to the fact that he will have to take a loan for the MBA and later on pay interest rate on that. So in row six, we have put the cost of MBA being 60K per year. Then we also have related costs. So the costs related to him being in the States, we assume that it will be 3000 per month and then he will spend each and every year 10 months. So obviously he will be studying four years. When we look at this table, we look at the perspective of uh, 20 years. So as you can see, each and every column is a separate year. So this is year one, K it's year two and so on and so forth. Now, since we want to have a loan to finance this, we show here uh, the size of the loan at the end of the year. And we calculate it by looking first of all at uh, the size uh, of the loan at the beginning, then whether it's increasing and whether we do certain repayments. At the beginning, obviously, in year one, it's zero. But then since we want to finance year one, we take a loan of 90,000 US dollars and we do this exactly in year two. And that's why at the end of year two, we have 180,000 US dollars. Later on, we obviously start repaying it. So it's going gradually down. So it gets to 160 year three, 140 year four and so on and so forth. So the repayment depends basically on how much we assume to be repaid and how much is left. So we assume that every year we're going to be paying 20,000 and that's why we are this repaying in nine years. So by year 11, we actually have no loan. Now, obviously, if we change this, for example, to 10, this will be altered and we'll get the different numbers. Now, when it comes to interest paid on the loan, so how much we have to pay due to the fact that we have the loan, we calculate it in a very simple manner. So we look at the average loan size. So we look at the beginning and at the end of the loan. We divide it by two and this way we get the average and we multiply by the interest rate. So we take the loan at the end. At the beginning, we multiply by interest rate and we divide it by two to get the average. Now, we assume that uh, the interest rate will be paid only after the second year, so after we finish the studies. So the year three, we start paying interest rate of 5%. So we pay 9,000 year three, 8,000 year four, and so on and so forth. So on the basis of that, we are able to calculate the cash flow related to the loan. So we group here all the things we have to pay. So this actually consists of two things. So the payment of the loan and then interest paid. So in year three, we pay 29,000 and then it goes down to 21,000 in year 11. And obviously it will be zero since we have already repaid all the loan in year 12. Now we're going to use this as a basis for all the three scenarios. So we're going to use the, the cash flow in order to see how we are benefiting from the MBA, given obviously different assumption for each and every scenario. So let's move on to scenario number one being the pessimistic scenario. So let's have a look at the first scenario, the pessimistic one. So please go to sheet pessimistic and you'll see here that we tried to both show the benefits and costs of uh, having the MBA, obviously assuming the pessimistic approach to benefits. So the cash flow related to the loan we have modeled in the MBA cost sheet. And here we simply show the data. So we start repaying the loan and interest in year three, and then we finish this in year 11. So every year, roughly, we are paying above 20K. 
Now, when it comes to the benefit, we have it in row eight. We simply look at the base income without the MBA. And then we have assumption that uh, we will, thanks to MBA, increase our net income by 10%. So in other words, in year three, you would be earning additional 6K thanks to the MBA. And obviously this is going up. This is going up because we also assume that the basic net income, even without the MBA, will be going up as well. So we have the starting point of 60,000 in J9, and then we have assumed ongoing growth of 4% going every year up. So as you can see, the basic income, even without the MBA, goes in year 18, almost up to $120,000. And obviously, therefore, the increase in net income goes up from 6 to almost 12K because we assumed obviously for each and every period that 10% is what we can contribute to having MBA. Now on the base of those two things, we calculated net cash flow due to MBA. So we have the increase in net income in one row, row 15, and this is simply a transfer of data from row eight. And we've got the cash flow related to the loan in row 16, and this is simply the data from row six shown here. And we calculate in row 14 the difference between those two values. So as you can see in the first few years, so up to year 12, we basically have a negative impact with MBA because we are earning more. However, we are still paying a huge part of the the MBA cost, the, the loan and the interest paid. And only after 12 years, we start actually seeing positive impact. So we are done with paying the, the loan and we can finally enjoy the increase in salary. So now we use the net present value to see what is the impact. And as you can see, it's actually negative. So for the pessimistic scenario, the, the whole MBA doesn't actually make much sense because within the 20 years, we're actually losing money. And we also did the decomposition of those two things. So we calculated the NPV of the increase in net income, which is 93,000. And then we also have the NPV of the loan. So it's 160,000. And therefore we have this difference of uh, minus 67,000. If you assume that uh, you would only be able to increase your salary by just 10%, it would not make much sense within the next 20 years to make the MBA because the NPV would be actually of this thing below zero. So it does make sense because you spend more than you get in terms of benefits. Now let's see what we'll get in realistic and optimistic scenario. When it comes to realistic and optimistic scenario, we have them again in separate sheets that have exactly the same construction as pessimistic sheet. So here it's for the realistic scenario and here it is for the optimistic. So the only actually difference between those sheets is the assumption in the increase of your salary due to the MBA. So in the case of the realistic, it's 20%. In the case of the optimistic, it's 40 And obviously, in the case of the pessimistic, it was 10 So let's see what this actually changes. So if we increase by 20 our salary thanks to the MBA, it means that we would in year three be able to generate additional 13K per year. And this actually goes up to more than 23,000 in year 18. Now, what does it uh, mean when it comes to the net cash flow due to the MBA? we are generating much higher cash flows. So they're still negative and only after 12 years it is positive. However, as you can see, they are much lower than in the case of the pessimistic. So for example, in year three, it was minus 22,000. And in the case of a realistic, it's only minus 16. And the best way to see it is actually the NPV. The NPV is finally positive and it is 26,000. In the case of the pessimistic, it was minus 67. And this is obviously due to the fact that uh, the NPV of the increase in the net income is much higher. So in the case of the pessimistic, it was 93,000. In the case of realistic, it is 186,000. Obviously, the loan is the same for every scenario, so this doesn't change at all. So in the case of optimistic, obviously, it is even better. Here, we also observe that we actually are very fast reaching to positive cash flow per year. So already in year five, we have slight positive cash flow of 2K per year, and the NPV has increased to 213,000. And again, it is due to the fact that the, each and every year we have a much higher cash flows, and we are able to generate in total, when we look from the perspective of the NPV, 373,000 in additional net income due to the MBA. Obviously, this is due to the fact that here we assumed huge spike in our salary of 40%. 
So in the next lecture, we will compare all those scenarios and we'll try to decide whether, given the probabilities of each and every scenario, this MBA makes sense or not. So let's try and compare the scenarios and see whether through the scenario analysis, we are getting to the conclusion that the MBA makes sense or maybe it doesn't make sense at all. So here in each and every column, we have put the scenario. So in J, we've got the pessimistic scenario, K realistic and, and L optimistic. As you can see, we have put in row five the NPV that we have calculated previously, and below we have the decomposition. So we know what is the contribution on the positive side from having much higher net income. And obviously we have also the negative contribution. So the loan we have to pay plus the interest rate. The interest rate and loan are the same for each and every scenario. So it's 160,000 in each and every scenario. And the only difference is obviously in the increase of the net income. So again, just to reiterate for scenario pessimistic, we would be generating negative cash flow in terms of NPV for the last 20 years of 67,000. For realistic scenario, it's 26. And then for optimistic, it's 213. Now, in scenario analysis, you don't know which scenario will happen, so you have to attach some probabilities. And here, what we've got here. So they have to sum up to 100. So we assumed uh, that the pessimistic is 30% chances of happening, then realistic 50, and then 20% was the probability of optimistic scenario. Since we got below the NPV values of the 20 year cash flow for each and every scenario, we were able to calculate here N12, the expected value from having MBA. And as you can see, it is positive. So in other words, given the probabilities of those scenarios, we see slight upside in having the MBA, or which is worth roughly 37,000 in total. So it means that given the cost of MBA, most likely I'm expected less than 40,000 in 20 years. And now the decision is up to you. So you know the probabilities and you know what is the upside. So you can decide actually, is it worth the effort to get additional 40,000 over the next 20 years? Or maybe it makes more sense to do something else during those two years. So here we show how it looks from the data-driven approach. However, your preference and your expectations also should be taken into account. For some people, the 40,000 will be a lot. For others, it will be not sufficient to devote two years of the time. So that's in short. If you have any questions regarding this case, please let me know by posting a question in the discussion field or reach me directly in Udemy.